If you want to keep your mind sharp, you have to keep your body strong. And I also think of a lot of things when I cycle because your mind is sort of free and you'd be surprised at the innovative things that come to mind. Warren Johnson was a professor. He developed a valve that would regulate the amount of steam going into the radiators so that the classrooms would be comfortable. And that's where everything kind of started from. This is where we have our water chilling units. So this is your cooling. You got hot water coming in here. This is your heating. My thesis was on optimal control of thermal storage. Oftentimes they have chillers that are four or five times bigger than this. So you can imagine how much energy they consume when they run. The university wanted to be a leader in energy efficiency for their campus. And we went out and talked to manufacturers and asked them, how would you control my plant? Nobody really had a good answer. Just uh, an optimization technology meeting that we're having. And historically, we never had the ability to tackle some of these problems. You have to have a roadmap or you'll never be able to solve a hard problem. Given today's technology, now we can. This is Omero. Omero and I have been working together for I don't know how long. 16 years. Back when we both had hair. <laughs> These are water chilling units, so they take water coming from the building and they cool it down. And then they can either take that water back out to the building or they can take the water into a thermal energy storage tank and basically save it for later in the day. These are heat recovery chillers. They'll take warm water from the building and create cold water, but out of their condenser side, they also create hot water. And then you've got boilers, which can also create hot water, which can go to the campus or be stored. The problem in determining how much of the load should be met by these at any point in time or how much should come from the thermal storage is an optimal control problem. Perfect. Instead of the optimization being around minimizing energy, we flop the optimization so it's all around minimizing cost now. We gotta have this thing done timely and it's gotta work. So this is the battery test area. Batteries are definitely part of the future. They're part of the energy storage solution. Batteries come next. So now, anytime you have energy storage, whether it's a tank of something in a central plant or whether it's an electrical battery, you have to solve this optimal control problem, which is well solved using model predictive control methodologies. We're taking advantage of mathematics that we have that others don't to also look at the costs of the energy at the same time. These prices continually change over the course of a day. When costs are cheap, you typically are gonna charge your storage. And then when costs are high, you're gonna discharge your storage, right? We now consume more energy when the costs are low, but we consume less energy when the costs are high. You're basically shifting the energy around. Seven iterations later, I think we finally got it. <laughs> so their annual utility bill went from about five million a year to about four million a year. We predict up to seven days in advance what we think the energy costs will be, what the actual loads are going to be in the building, what the outside air conditions are going to be. And all of a sudden now there's a revenue generation component, which a battery is ideal for the plant model now in simulation. So the future is that combined customer value of bill minimization and revenue generation together. If you can accommodate the time varying energy costs and optimally control the storage, you're gonna save money. We're pretty fearless and we really think we can solve any problem. And I think we enjoy those challenges. Today you're really pretty much limited by your imagination.